Kitten internet. Uh, so today we're going to be playing Faxanadu. Um, I'll get to more about Faxanadu after going through the opening, but for those of you that have played Faxanadu before, this is going to look a little different. I've been on a long journey. Came back, my hometown, find it almost deserted. The gate is closed. People are gone, and the walls are crumbling. I wonder what happened. So, Faxanadu, or Famicom Xanatu, that's actually, or I should probably go Famicom Xanatu, because it's mirror image to me, um, is a spin-off of the very long-running um, Legend of Xanatu series. Uh, it's so long running that I think there were three entries in the series before this spin-off. And this is, uh, well, you can see from the box art below me, this is an NES game. And there's still games in the series being released, like, in modern, present times. So, this is a very long series of a game. And this is the only entry I've ever played. So, we are technically playing the Japanese version of the game with a patch that adds in the U.S. English translation and the European release of fonts. And the reason for the fonts bit, and maybe I'll post a screenshot of the original one before, is that the font is really hard to read. Like, a capital H looks like a capital N, so it's kind of like everybody says Nello instead of Hello. Um, became a little, I guess, equivalent of a meme for my family when I was playing this. Oops. Keep forgetting. Um, controls are backwards from what I'm used to. Uh, I've been playing a lot of um, whatchamacallit, um, various games, and for a 360 controller, this is accept and this is cancel instead of the other way around. So, this is an action RPG, a side scrolling action RPG. So, if somebody has seen or played, um, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, or Zelda 2. This is a very similar style of game. Um, this is sort of an RPG? Uh, not really. I consider this action-adventure, and I'm hoping to share it with you. So, again, side-scrolling. You can enter buildings. This is a fishmonger, for instance. I can go up and talk to the fishmonger. Dried meat to bring energy for 50 golds? Well, I don't have any money. Oh, forgot the very famous quote. This is not enough golds. You've not enough golds as a, also a meme. Uh, this game, for how little people actually played this game, this is a well-quoted game, strangely enough. So we are currently in the town of is this Apollon, or is that the next town? I don't remember now. Listen to people. You'll only get frustrated if you just walk around. And what you're seeing for the bright graphics actually is what my brain tells me was from the NES. So, if you're having problems making this um, old man who's married to the woman in the dress, if this is looking really jarring to you, that's because it did. 
back then. It's really hard to make out details other than those really weird eyeballs. The dwarves are robbing the elves' money and jewelry. Oops. I keep hitting cancel instead. Oh, that's actually all he was saying. Never mind. So, you are in an elven town. These are elves. There are no humans in this game, to my knowledge. This is the elf town of... Oh, this is Eola, sorry. Abloon's the second town. It is located at the bottom of the world tree. So, during this game, we'll be climbing up the world tree. Um, lots of references to various things. The elves live here. Go to see the guru before you see the king. So, you'll notice some Christian symbology here, and this is one of the reasons why I'm playing the Japanese version of the game. This was completely censored from the US version of the game. No crosses, um, no Jesus on the cross, which strangely enough, today's Easter Sunday that I'm recording this. Uh, and the guru, as they're called in the American version, is not holding anything. They just look like they're uh, going like this constantly for some reason. And there's no cross on this particular um, portrait. Also, everybody blinks really strangely as they speak. This ring will identify you. Don't lose it. And now I have the elf ring that indicates that I'm an elf. Apparently you need that. So yeah, buildings kind of all look the same. They try to do some dithering. It doesn't look so... It didn't look so well back then either. This is the key merchant. There's a key merchant in nearly every town. Also, this game strangely obsessed with smoking. You would think elves wouldn't be smoking, but... You know? I guess pipes and so on were in Lord of the Rings. Anyway... You buy keys there, and keys are one use in this game. And we will be buying keys, but right now, you can look at the top of the screen. Um, we've got two bars on the left. The first bar is mana, and the second one is power, or hit points as we would call it. Um, each of those bars represent 80. So your maximum mana is 80, your maximum hit points are 80. It will forever be 80 in the game. It never increases. Um, up at the top, we have E for experience. Uh, T for time, um, I'll explain that more when we actually get an item that uses it, and G for golds. That's right, you keep seeing it and you keep hearing me say it, golds, plural. One golds, two golds, three golds. Anyway, this is a tool shop. Um, this is what I was saying by the Hello versus Nello. This is a lot easier to read, and that's the reason why I'm playing this version of the game, is because I didn't want the Nello even though that's what I grew up with. Uh, apparently there are two releases of the US version. One actually has this font. So some of you may be wondering why in the world I keep talking about Nello. Um, who knows, probably nobody's ever played this game that's watching this video. So you can buy and sell tools here. Um, tools include weapons like this dagger, uh, healing items such as a red potion or elixir, and magic such as the deluge magic. You have no idea how long it took me to actually figure out how to pronounce deluge. This is not enough golds. Anyway, um, so I first received this game. Dwarves are already in town. It's like the end is near. Um, I first received this game as a birthday present for my eighth birthday. A friend of mine named Peter bought me this game. He came to my birthday party. It was at Chuck E. Cheese. The last time I actually had a, like, real birthday party with, like, organization. That's not quite true, but... Only time I've ever done a destination birthday party. Did you hear that sound effect when I walked in? That's actually the game checking to see if you have the elf ring. If you come over here without the ring of elf, you can't enter. It just doesn't let you. Anyway, this is a magic trainer. Once more, I have no money. Um, this is a magic trainer where it's a bit of a misnomer. The magic trainer just restores your magic power. And this is a martial arts trainer. Do you want a martial arts lesson for 200 golds? Once more, all that does is restore your hit points. Um, on its surface, this is a very simple game. That's because it is. There's a few hidden weirdness bits that I never knew about until I was much older. Last well is almost dry. But anyway, we are apparently going to go talk to the king. 
This guard's very rude to you if you don't have the Ring of Elf. Instead, the king is waiting for you. Apparently, you gaining the ring means that the king's waiting for you. Don't expect, like, heavy plot from this game, by the way. This is not... This is a action-adventure game. So, the king will sit and stand based off of your physical position. So I like making sure that the king gets a workout. And then now we get to talk to the king. Glad you could come. Disaster has befallen us. The elf fountain water, our life source, has stopped. The wells are drying up. Many men went out. Nobody came back. You are our last hope. I shall give you 1,500 gold. Prepare your, for your journey with this money. It will be a dangerous journey. Take care of yourself. And now we have 1,500 golds. So now we can buy things. So we actually can't go through the game without talking to this person. Even speedrunners have to do it because... Uh, unless if they glitch things. I think it might be possible to glitch things. But um, you can't attack without a weapon. This punch does zero. I have no magic. I did not actually want to talk to you. Oh, you say something different. So, there is a fountain in the town of Fourpaw. Fourpaw, I think, is the third town in the game. You'll notice that there's a bunch of towns. Anyway, these enemies here, they are enemies that I'm jumping over. I'm just fairly good at jumping. Yeah, I usually get hit by one of them, and that's fine. You'll understand in a moment. Uh, those are dwarves. Any monster in the game is a dwarf. Some of them are more powerful dwarves than others, but they're all dwarves. Don't know why. Anyway, our objective is to spend money right now, so we're going to buy all of our equipment. So we're going to get a dagger. And they immediately boot you out of the shop screen every time that you buy something. We're going to buy everything except for the elixir reference. And there's a reason why we're not going to buy the elixir. We'll get to that in a moment. Going to buy... You know, actually, we're only going to buy one red potion. <clears throat> Oh, um, for reference, I'm playing this on emulator. I actually don't own an NES anymore, even though I did own this game. Uh, it's been long since gone. I haven't had my NES since I was 13? I finally got rid of my NES shortly after I received a PlayStation, for reference. And that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that, but... Uh, we were moving, and... Or, we're always moving, and as a result, the mentality in the household was, don't keep things. You're just going to have to move it, and that's bad, so we're just going to have to get rid of it then. Anyway, we're buying jack keys. All of the keys are based off of cards. We're going to buy a bunch of jack keys, for reference. Namely, we're going to buy as many as I can afford, so three more. I don't remember off the top of my head how many jack keys you need in the game, but in general, the earlier on you are, the cheaper things are. So, like, these jack keys right now are costing 100 golds. Later on, they might cost 500 or 1,000 golds. And that's kind of the way the game works. Hmm. I'm actually being a little loud and peeking, I just noticed. Okay, that should be a little better. Maybe. Anyway, let's continue buying jack keys. And then we are going to do the time-honored Faxanadu trick. So there's two different ways of doing this, and I'll explain both of them, but I'm going to do the quicker one for me. So I've got 40 golds to my name right now. I'm kind of worthless. I've got no money, I'm barely at any health, and whoops, I just walked into a dwarf and died. Don't have negative thoughts. Remember your mantra. And you respawn. Visit all gurus on your way. You'll get a title according to your experience. So, the way experience works in this game is very strange. Experience is how is 
however much experience you have will give you money when you die. So technically, if you never die in the game, there is almost no use of leveling up. It just doesn't do anything. So death as a way of getting back money is very common. In this case, I use death for two reasons. The first one is that now I'm at full magic and power. Uh, and speaking of, I should actually equip things. So we now have a dagger equipped. So we technically do have armor on. I'll show that in a moment. We don't have any shields. I'll equip Deluge. This is our inventory. Um, there are no pages in this inventory for reference. So you see that there's two slots left? Yeah, I have two inventory slots left. And I'm going to use one of them. So that means that I have a jack key ready to use. So the next time I go up to a door, it will try to use a jack key. Um, alternately, I can... This is the way I use potions and so on, is by equipping them. Anyway, finally we have the player. This indicates our stats. We are currently novice level. Uh, I believe it goes novice up to hero? I want to say hero's last level? I don't remember anymore. Um, and again, I'm intentionally not looking things up. Uh, in order to level up, we need a thousand experience. We are currently equipped with a dagger. Leather armor. It's not actually possible to unequip the leather armor until you have better armor and you can't sell the leather armor, so I'm pretty sure it's just nothing. Uh, we don't have a shield. We have deluge magic. And we have one item, which is a ring of elf. And yes, I know I had an entire inventory of things. See, now we can stab. Daggers are terrible, by the way. I will want to upgrade this weapon as soon as possible because these things that are on the ground, I still can't hit them with dagger. What I can do is use Dalish magic, which is what that is. See? Now I have 60 XP. Each of those gave me 30 XP. Cool. So now we're going to go talk to the king because the king is waiting for me. Make the king do some exercise. I mean, the king's not in very good health. I mean, you could really tell because he's completely forgotten our existence. So, the way Faxanadu does checks for something like this is to check to see if you have any money. If you have zero money, which we have zero money, the king will go through this spiel again and give us 1,500 gold. We could have also just spent 100% of our money, which is possible. And then just walk back to the king, get our money. Just like this. And then, like, you can keep doing this repeatedly until your inventory is full of things. I don't like cheating the system quite that much, and you might be a little surprised by that given my propensity of cheating the system in, uh, my magic games. It's... This game isn't that hard from what I remember. Anyway, we're buying one other thing. We're buying an elixir. Because this is the only place in the game that you can buy an elixir for not stupid amounts of money. So I should explain what the other items do. Red potions or healing potions. Simple enough. If I remember correctly, they're a full heal. Um, elixirs are also a full heal that trigger automatically when you die. You can only hold one elixir at a time. A second red potion just in case because I'm rusty at this game. Um, you can only hold one elixir at a time and it gets used up automatically. Which is the reason why I didn't want to buy an elixir ahead of time. That way I can go run into the uh itchy nose. Run into the shop and or run back to the bridge with the dwarves, get killed, then spawn again. Anyway, so we need a key of Jack every time that we leave this place. And you're going to notice me talk to people quite a bit. Don't try too hard. Nobody likes to try hard, apparently. A meteorite fell into the world tree and created havoc. At the end of the confusion, the dwarfs, not dwarves, but dwarfs of the underworld came up and attacked the elves. Nobody knows the reason. 
there is a plot to the game, it's just a little weak. But we can buy fish here. Fish is going to be our primary source of healing in towns. They heal both magic and hit points. I'm just gonna call it MP and HP. Um, we can't actually re-enter from where we came from. Go straight ahead and you'll find the town of Apollon. Yeah, it's really hard to get lost in the beginning part of the game. But we have a dwarf here. Wow, am I rusty. So, technically, you can sit and grind here forever, because enemies respawn the moment you go off screen. I am really rusty at this game, my apologies. Anyway. Yeah, THX 1138. Anyway. This is where I wanted to go. I wanted to buy some fish to show you. Dried meat to bring energy for 50 golds. The cheapest spot in the game to heal, by the way. Thank you for shopping. And I want to say dried fish is something like 35 hit points and... Uh, 35 hit points and um, 30 magic points. It's uneven. I've used the key. Or I've used the key. Welcome to the world. I'm gonna need to move my uh, microphone out of the way because it's actually blocking my visibility. So, everything is just a series of still images. So this is the entire screen until I move over. Then it will scroll and more enemies will appear. So enemies are generally predictable, which is the reason why I was saying I was rusty. But there is some randomization going on. One, their positioning. Uh, it's dependent on the current random number input, which just like many other games of this era, it's based off of key presses, physical locations, timing, and so on. Uh, occasionally, items will spawn, like up toward the top up there where the dwarf was hopping. There could be an item there. It's random and rare. I don't feel like dealing with those. I meant to let that go. Darn it. This is... Just saying I was getting used to things and then I'd take a bunch of damage. So yeah, some enemies drop money, some enemies drop food, and some enemies drop items. Um, the enemies that drop items are bosses. For the most part. Oh, and enemies can bounce you off the edge of the screen. That would mean that you have to walk back in and it respawns enemies. So watch out for that. Anyway, we have our first new enemy. These are zombies, I think. You know, the game, I don't think, ever actually gives you names for most things. Those just give XP. They actually have no drops. But there's a shop here. You'll notice it's taking me more hits to actually kill them. So, there's a tool shop here. Hello, I sell tools. I am here to buy. What would you like? And you'll notice that these are extraordinarily expensive items. So, this is a shield. This is technically the first shield that you can find in the game. It costs way more than I have. And then this is Death Magic. Death Magic is one of the least efficient spells in the game and costs even more than the Magic Shield. We can come back here later to buy them, but it's a pretty long trek back by the time that you have enough money. So you have to be a little careful. Also, when you pop out, because we uh, screen changed, that means that enemies respawned. Uh, there's no falling damage for reference. There's just damage from hitting enemies. Really. And here we are. There are dwarves all over in the Tower of Trunk. Go out of town, turn right, and go straight. Then you'll find the Tower of Trunk. We are in Apollon. Hello, I sell tools. I'm here to buy. 
and now we can buy a small shield. You'll notice that the red potion's already nearly double the price it was in the previous town. There's a reason why I buy things in the first town, but this is our first case of a small shield, so I'm going to buy it, because I don't have a shield, and shields are very useful. So, oh, can't equip things indoors. So now I have a shield. You can see it on the little person. The shield's always facing the screen. Also, key merchant, as usual. Um, so the reason for the shield is that it will block magic attacks and other projectile attacks. They sell keys. What would you like? What do you have? You have a jack key for 40 golds more than the previous town. This is why I bought so many keys. And Isun's crying in the basement. So we've got a bar where there's one person trying to eat something and drink a bottle. If you have a mattock, you can break the wall. But if you don't have it... The mattock should be in the tower. You can get it by defeating a dwarf. So the game's never really sure as to whether everything's a dwarf or if bosses are dwarves. I'm just going to call everything a dwarf. I'm going to check up on my kitty. I'll be right back. And I'm back. Isun keeps trying to go down to the basement, expecting litter boxes that aren't there anymore. Anyway, where was I? Oh, back to this person. There's the tower, town of Fourpaw ahead of you. So yeah, this is Apolloon, the next town's Fourpaw. I did not want to talk to you, I wanted to go into the church. So, one of the changes that people are- you will give peace of mind, I will meditate with you. This is one of the changes to Faxanadu that I was talking about. In the US version of the game, there was a password screen here, and the password screen was horrible because it was a random, very long string of alphanumeric letters that would appear here instead. However, the game was actually released on the Famicom Disk System in Japan, which meant that you had the ability to save. It's the reason why I'm using the Japanese version of the game for the base, not just because it's decensored, but also because it has save features. Um, that's also the reason for the character name at the beginning, if I remember correctly, um, which is also not in the US version of the game. Not that it helps, because there's four characters that you have. So this is a hospital. You'll have a nurse at the hospital. Watch out for the jar of poison. The poison will take your energy away. And the doctor. Do you want a treatment? It's 250 golds, please. No. Treatment will always always cost more than fish. Not that there's any fish in this town, but just if you see both in a town, it's more expensive to get treatment. You can carry eight items. They're all important. Choose well. So treatment is both full heal and full magic restore for reference. Did you learn the Guru's mantra? The mantra will return you to this world. Hold on to the mantra. Or, you know, I can use actual save games. Speaking of, I should save state just in case. And we're going further. I mean, there's really not much in Apolloon to speak of. You'll notice I'm also taking a little bit less damage when I do dumb things like get hit by that bouncing thing. This is where I would use a jack key. Oh, this is what appears if you don't have the uh, key currently active. There's a mark of jack by the keyhole, which is J key. And then you bump up here, and the road's blocked. So we have to use a jack key in order to be able to progress. So we're going to equip a jack key and enter. I've used key. 
So now we're in the tower that was previously mentioned. There's a lot of interesting and weird things in this tower, by the way. Yep, they can use... So, let's see if I remember... Let it fall down. Uh, there's a random spawn of something over here. Uh, like right where I'm standing. And I never remember how to trigger it. A little low on magic, I may end up having to pop back over to Apolloon. Maybe after I've reached 1000 XP. Because I'm probably going to die against the boss at this rate. And then we have a new enemy. Who is obnoxious. The Minotaur. That bounces really high. I'm going to save state here because, again, this area is dangerous. But you can just move away and not get hit by them. Just can't sit still. Okay, we're at over 1,000 XP, which yay. Man, it would be nice if I had any type of magic restore whatsoever. The only way I can restore magic is by dying. It's great. We have a new enemy. I don't know what those things are supposed to be, but I consider them like displacer type things. Notice, I can actually hit that one now. Like the uh, spiky porcupine type thing. Damn it. Ah. As long as I don't do stupid things like that. So this is a way that I can actually heal up a little bit. Easily. Which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to max out my hit points first. Because I don't need to use magic power in here. So it's going to take me a little bit, but it's going to be worth it. Oh, money went away. Oh, well. And over here, got another encounter. These things. Come on. They do have patterns, it's just it's been, yeah, probably 20 years since I last played this. 20? Uh, more like 18. I did play this once, I played through it all the way in college. Oh boy. First boss. I'm out of magic. Notice how much damage I'm taking. And I had to use the elixir. This is why I save stated. I don't have a choice. I need more magic. So I can. There we go. Defeated. And I have received. I am holding magic. By the way, this isn't a super long game. And yes, the boss does in fact respawn. And yes, I am going to take advantage of that because the boss is really good money and XP at this point of the game. Letting those porcupines go by. And going back in because up here is actually safe-ish from the boss. I don't really need magic for the rest of the dungeon or the walk back to Apolloon. Or I could just go ahead further, now that I think about it. That's one wasted spell. But 
See? Decent amount of money and experience. But you basically have to use magic to fight it. Um, if I had a better weapon, I can pull it off without magic. There we go. That patented an ES slowdown. So, I do have a couple of, um... Betterment of life options, I guess you can say. Um, so you'll notice that, uh, so NES is frequently, if there's too many things on the screen at a time, they'll start flickering because it's trying to display too many objects and it's just ro quickly rotating back and forth between them. I have that disabled. Um, thanks to the powers of emulation, I can do that. These enemies are trolls, by the way. Um, but yeah, I have the ability to disable that. It still does the slowdown, it just doesn't do the, like, um, whatchamacallit, um, the flickering. The flickering bothers me a bit, especially when I am capable of removing it. So, similar to how I have save games, even though this game doesn't normally support, uh, knows how much damage I took from that thing. Moving away at this point. Uh, I can fight you. They're not too hard to fight. Getting them stuck on the side of a screen is one way to actually defeat them pretty easily. Um, so we still don't have enough for the magic shield, unfortunately. Magic shield's a really nice shield. I want it, but... That would require us grinding against that uh, dragon more, and I don't want to. Besides, I have to go walk back and buy another elixir, because I am not about to let that stand. The AI on this is not the smartest thing in the world. I was hoping to have something spawn there, but that didn't happen. Hmm. Wanna go back now? Probably. How am I doing on inventory space? Yeah, let's go back to the start. But yeah, basically it just costs me a jack key to go back in there. And that's not too bad. I'm gonna die at this rate. What is it, kitty? Kitty cat? What's wrong? Yeah, I am needing to pay more attention, and kitty cat making a lot of complaining noises is not helping. Anyway, back in Apple Inn. First thing we're going to do is stop by the guru, because I shall give you a title, Aspirant. Make sure you live up to it. And then meditate for the game save. So, if we go to player now, we are now an Aspirant, and the next XP level is 2200. Now we're going to walk all the way back. I'm going to make a save state here, just in case. I would much prefer to heal way back at the start, and I think I can pull it off, because there's not too much in the way of enemies here. As I say that and remember, oh right, do I even have enough magic to kill you? Yes. Sorry, Isun's really distracting today. I don't know how many parts this game will be, especially if I keep doing stupid things like that, I'm gonna die.
really easy to predict him. Why am I screwing up this much? I'm, like, at three hit points or something. And I'm dead. This is why I save stated, because I really don't want to lose progress right now. So also, when you load the game, it will also give you back the gold from your XP level, not from anything else. Zombies are easy to kill, as in... What are you doing, kitty? Hey, cat, you want to come over here and say hi? You haven't been in too many of my videos this year. Being really camera shy for some reason. And by camera, I mean video camera. He's definitely not camera shy in any other way. I think he's getting antsy because I removed one of his litter boxes. And again. Playing, he's turning around and playing with either my partner's jacket or his tail. Not sure which. See, that's what I expect to have happen. That worked. I have no magic left. I'm gonna have to jump over any more of those spinies. Damn it. Mm. Plus side, I am in fact going to level where I thought I was going. I have one hit point. Cool. I can make this work. As I say that. All right, let's load state. I just need to pay attention to patterns more. Uh, load state. There we go. Oy. This is the reason why I don't play games that require coordination usually. Uh, I say that and wasn't one of my first it was my second Let's Play was Zelliard, which requires a lot of coordination. You notice I can't return? The reason for that is that you need a jackie. Right? Um. Uh, you can normally return. What the heck? Am I just misremembering? I could have swore you could return all the way back. Oh, this is gonna be hard. I need to do all of this without getting hit and with no magic. I'm just going to change which state I'm on and figure out which one of these is the right one. Okay. One. Load state. I did not tell you to load from that particular state. Why is it doing this weird? Okay, well, this is going to be borderline impossible. Especially since I have two spinies I need to jump over. Cool. You know what? I'm gonna pause this and I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll be back. Ah, oh, made it back. Okay. And it dawned on me right as I was making it back that I have healing items in my inventory. What in the world am I doing? Anyway, we're going to actually use that treatment because it's actually cost effective right now. Oy. Don't try too hard. All right, go back to the guru and save. 
plus getting our new title of Battler. Okay. You need peace of mind. I will meditate with you. At 45 minutes, I can get to the next town. Should I, though? Much as it pains me to buy these keys. Pretty sure I needed one more. I can't remember. Oh. Alright, let's go to the next town before I stop for the day. for a moment. Fun. Alright, starting this back up again. Skip over that. Also going to equip a medic. Down an A. Up an A is magic. I've used medic. All right, we need to be really careful about this. Intentionally taking damage because you can actually, so you'll notice that that um, dwarf dropped down the stairs, which means it can take more damage, unfortunately. Um, the reason for that is that if I were to be knocked back from the left side of the screen, the opening would be closed again, and I would need another Matic. I'm holding a red potion. That's one of the random spawns that can happen. It's mostly for the, yeah, this area sucks. Here, have some healing. See a new enemy up top. Don't worry, we'll go through there soon enough. And two new enemies here. Flyers, which constantly hit me. provide food. It'd be better if I was better at the game. Alright, um, going up here for an enemy. It has a lot of hit points. The old man, I guess. I, I really don't know what these enemies are supposed to indicate. There's a glove there. We can get that glove. That's a new enemy. Yep, that's a magic user. Oh. The glove increases offensive power. So as a result, we now have a higher attack, I think. A lot of this is I think, because I don't really have great ways of figuring things out. Ow. Now this shield I take far less damage from shield than I do from magic normally. And the power of the glove's gone. Yeah, it's a temporary thing. Remember if I need to go down or not? I don't have to, okay. Anything, staying up is better. Because screw you while I'm in the new town. This is the town of Fourpaw. And this is the point of the game where I stopped playing when I was eight. Because this is as far as I can reliably get. Um, I mean, not literally stopping right here, but a little bit past here. And notice that cost 150 golds. My food was originally costing 50. Yeah. Hello, I sell tools. Uh, so we can now buy a long sword and studded mail. Luckily, we can actually afford both. We can't afford the wing boots right now, which for some reason my brain always sees a duck facing to the right rather than a boot with wings behind it. Just the way my brain works. We are going to get better weaponry. 
So if I remember right, the way rep weaponry works in this game, very similar to Zelliard in that it's not, hey, look, I have a new weapon. It's, I've increased my weapon. I'd have to double check that, and I haven't hacked around files in this game yet, so we'll see. Anyway, I have new things. So, let's equip them. Now I have a longsword. The more important part of the longsword is that I can actually attack at a longer range, which I desperately needed. Um, we now have armor, so I look spiffy for one. I'm still wearing shorts, apparently. I don't, I don't know why, just why. Um, I didn't get a new shield or magic yet. So, yep. Oh yeah, that's right. Look at our status. We need 3,500 XP to level, so it's gonna be a bit. Got a church. I'm gonna go sign up at. That way, in case if we die, bad things do not happen. Right. What do you have to say? Water from three springs flows into the fountain. Find the three springs and return the water to the fountain. So yeah, there's also a treatment place here. You notice that my food cost... So there's a spring in the Tower of Fortress. You'll find, dried, you'll find the dried up fountain and the entrance to the tower right above this town. So long. Oh, I just realized that they have holy symbols too. But treatments... 500 golds. So... Oh. Getting healed via treatment's significantly more expensive. I hear quite often about a fountain in the sky. When you go down from the town, you'll come to a place where the sky opens above. They say a fountain is up in the sky. But you need wing boots. Hint, hint. And then we have the key merchant. Selling jack keys and now queen keys for 500. I don't remember how many queen keys that I need, so I'm gonna buy one for now and then save an exit and then look that up later because queen keys are a lot more expensive. I don't wanna carry around too many of them. Do I even have more inventory space? No, no I don't. Guess that's as much as I'm getting for now. So I'm gonna stop it here, Internet. I will talk to you next time and hopefully this is an interesting video. I don't know if people are going to like this or not, but well, game I grew up on, and that seems to be my theme for things. Bye, Internet.